welcome again to my show, Searching for Integrity. My name really is John Smith, and I'm searching for people with integrity. Why? Because our country suffers from IDD, Integrity Deficit Disorder. Today I'm going to explore the rights and wrongs, good and the bad, of inflation and how it came about and how long is it going to be here with us. It's uh, not something that uh, uh, we'd like for it to go away. Uh, a lot of folks don't understand completely about why it's here and what happened and what, what did we do wrong is something that I can probably uh, address um, through the next uh, half hour or so. Let's, let's have a look at the beginning of this year, and maybe part of the last year. The, uh, you know, people wonder, where does inflation come from? Uh, it's, it's certainly man-made. It's not something you can, you can dig a hole and, and plant it and hope that it, it does well. Uh, nothing, nothing along those lines. Um, let me give you an example. This is about a year, one year ago. Uh, we were thinking about building a home in New Braunfels, Texas. As you know, I, I've moved now to Arizona, but we were still in New Braunfels then. We looked at some builders, talked to them. Uh, each builder, it seemed as though when we asked them what their overall cost was going to be, the, the amount kept getting higher and higher and higher. You know, it, and, and I talked to a number of the contractors. Um, for instance, the lumber costs last year tripled in the spring. I mean, tripled. It went from three or four hundred to 1200 and that is just right on the face of the of the beginning of, uh, of building a home we we looked at if that as being the beginning i guess we didn't want it to happen we would try and and maybe contractually tie in all the subs that are going to be working on the house the builder too so that we would escape all this high money stuff. But no, it, uh, we were still a little late to the, to the ball, uh, to the dance. Um, let's look at new construction. You know, it, um, the way we saw it, guess who? Guess who trades? Guess who wanted higher prices for themselves? All the trades. And when I say all the trades, it's the various people that are part of the building team. We looked at the cost of first thing goes, foundation. Uh, first you have clearing, you got to clear the lot. Uh, foundation. Then came the framing. Then the roofers electricians, next is plumbers, I guess, cabinets and doors, hardware, drywall, drywall, texture, paint inside and out, landscaping, fences, flat work, that's the sidewalks and driveways, um, it, it was amazing how much of that began to pile up in terms of a, a dollar pile. And the reason that started that was that when lumber prices coming out of Canada were going uh, through the roof, we looked at why this is causing all the others. And, and you have to think about it they are actually creating inflation and they want to create it because when they see that the lumber houses that bring the lumber to the to the lot 
to build the house. When they see that happen and they see that it's still going to be paid by three times what it's going to what it used to be, then all the other subcontractors started doing the same thing. All of a sudden, the framers' cost was twice what it used to be. The electricians, plumbers, everybody, everybody looked back. All these trades looked back at what was going on. And, well, it looked like they're still going to build here. And, I, yeah, yep, I'm going to be building to, according to my new price. And here's my new price. And for us, my wife and I, Alex, she and I were serious about why these things were being high. What is calling it other than, other than greed? Simple greed. Uh, once that begins, and others are willing to pay for that, that's the other thing. The buyers come along, maybe they had a house and home in California where things are extremely expensive. And they come along and they look at what they see and they're saying, well, this, this is cheap. This, this Texas housing is cheap. I shouldn't say cheap, but you might think quality. It's good quality, but they didn't want to pay much for it because they didn't have to. When they looked at that situation, all the subs were doing the same thing. All the subs were pulling it down. This was also in the era, era, E-R-A, era, when Biden and the Democrats began throwing money. Reminds me of Bernack, the head of the Federal Reserve back in the 07, 08. He, he talked about helicopter money. And of course, that scared a lot of people. And they should have because it led to a severe recession. They called it a great recession. By the way, we'll be talking about uh, our recession and how it may compare to the great recession back then, coming up next week. So the government, the people, Congress, were looking at buying votes. They felt like if they threw money at the, at the wall and threw money at the people, then they were going to be able to count on these people to have their vote. And that actually happened, but it turned out not to be true. America did wise up. America looked at it and said to themselves, this is stupid. We shouldn't have to do this. But nevertheless, it's upon us. Um, there's a number of things that are caused by government in terms of inflation, one of which was Janet Yellen, who literally confessed, I guess within the last week or two, that she underestimated how the inflation was going to be. And then she did one of the things that politicians and people in, in Washington never do. She then said, uh, it was my fault. I did it wrong. I didn't do it right. And then, of course, everybody else is thinking, well, why are you still there? Is somebody else more capable to see that and counteract that? It's, um, it's just crazy. Um, and then more stuff comes along, you know? Um, I recall last summer that unemployment was getting pretty, pretty steep, un unemployment was. Um, they learned that they could stay home and not have to work because the government was throwing money at them. And the government was not only throwing money at them, but they were throwing other um, Sessions, concessions to them because they could and they did. For instance, 
a lot of landlords, renters, the renters weren't required to make their land, their, their uh, payments. And they even passed county and state parts of the countries because they didn't have to. And they could be there as long as they wanted until that law went away. And people were there because they want to go to work. When the money's free and the money is sloshing all around and flying away from below the helicopter, they don't want any of that work. They want just to sit back and watch TV. And when that happened, then the infrastructure of the economy began to rattle. Uh, and people didn't see what he was doing. I looked at it, and I knew what was going on, uh, that there was not going to be any benefit from any of that. If anything, anything, it's going to be worse, much worse. What do you do? Well, you recognize it's upon you. I don't believe we're going to see any more of this money that we got, people got, I think they called it COVID money, 3,000 per person, 6,000 per family, something like that. That's across America. Costs themselves went up. You know, if it's available and it's there, and you've got the money, oh, we'll get money again. No, nope, didn't happen. Some of the politicians said, we're not going to do this again. And actually, Biden had another, and Pelosi had another bill ready to go to throw out some more money. And a couple of uh, stalwart uh, Democrats came over to the conservative side and prevented that from happening again. Joe Manchin of West Virginia and the lady from Arizona. What else is around us? What else is causing inflation? Look at the oil pipelines. We can't afford gasoline because it's now over, what, six bucks a gallon? And it was Biden when he first thing he did when he took office, the first day, he said, no more gasoline. And he's still talking today with all the problems, no more gasoline. And then he'll say something, again, extra stupid. Well, it's Putin, you know, it's just trying to hide is what he's doing. Nobody believes him. And his problem is going to be that everybody hears him, looks at him, and wonders how can he keep saying what he's saying because they're just lie after lie after lie. They're not true. And people now are looking at it. I looked at a, a survey just yesterday that the, the, the people that would be willing to listen to Biden and vote for him were 20% you know, of the people. And there was another 72% on the other side that they were not going to have a thing to do with the Democrats. And this election is going to hurt, hurt the Democrats. It's, um, now, what do we do? What do we do? You and me do. What do we do? Okay. Well, we need to get the budget out, and we need to have a look at it. And not knowing where we're going and if we have the money to do it, we need to, to reconsider that vacation driving across the US. That's certainly a, a, a long haul dollar amount. Speaking of long hauls, we're talking trucks. Trucks are now at, at, on their knees in terms of them trying to make a, a profit. I can't say that it's a triple profit, but I know that they're having to cover their own diesel fuel to move people, let's say from Texas to Arizona, they moved us. 
We had problems with China, China and their shipping. And with, with fewer goods on the shelves, people will grab all they can. People don't think about what the other person behind them might need and need, need more. I think there were a number of, in, in ongoing, there are supply deficiencies of, of things that are on the shelves, toys, for instance. Um, or weren't they concerned? Maybe they just thought it was going to go away. Maybe they just thought that somehow the government is going to bail them out. Maybe they thought that the demos were going to um, help them as much as they could um, along the lines of being able to, to get back in the game. You know, it's amazing to me that a new car today has ratcheted up in terms of, of dollar amount. And one of the things that is just, you know, it's not, it's not right. It's just, it's just not right. What's not right about it was because it's, you've got, excuse me, you've got used cars that are coming out now. And used cars are almost as much as the new cars. That's because, again, that same factor, the same thing of greed, I can afford it. Don't worry about it. Somebody's going to come along and angel fairy and take us all together and we'll be okay. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. I think that, uh, I hope that we're not going to see any more of the unemployment money that was sent out. I think they were 3,000 bucks a person at one point. They called it the COVID, COVID money uh, as part of it. It's, um, it, it's it, it looks great at the time, but then you look back on it and you say to yourself, how did we let that happen? You know, weren't we just thinking at all, at all how could we do that again? If we just had one more chance, would we be more frugal? Frugal means you don't spend much to some of my children. No, I shouldn't say that. All my children are, are adults. Um, and they know what that means, because we raised them that way, my wife and I. Um, there was an insanity, or oh, an incentive, for child care distribution. And they were receiving child care care tax credits when there weren't any tax credits available on their tax return. But still, they had this incentive child care distribution. You know, we ask each other frequently, what, what can you do to help? What can you do to help yourself? Because nobody else is going to help you. You've learned that lesson a long time ago. So you need to put out a plan. Start your plan. Be prepared. Make a list. And then rank them. What's important? What's not? What's, what's especially important and what's not? You know, and then to have this child's formula Baby food uh, is just amazing how this can happen and get out of, get out of whack. And you know we got babies who can't can't drink the formula. Uh, I mean, how many ways can we go wrong? How many ways do we watch these people and they think they're going to get reelected and they're not because America is finally wising up. Seriously, they are. But we begin a budget, and we prioritize what's important and what we need. And we've already done that, and we're getting to a point to where we're, we're trying to find new ways to save money. 
And one of the ways that we decided to save money would be if, oh boy, we went to Costco's the other day and looked at the meat department and the meats that I recall being priced at Costco, they were like double. I mean, you needed a, you know, there was one beef tenderloin about, I don't know, maybe 18 inches, four inches thick. They wanted $144 for that. And sure enough, people coming in, picking them up, put them in their basket, not thinking a thing about it. So we're, we too are shopping um, on, a, on a short penny because we want to make sure that we have good meat. And if the price goes up further, we'll be prepared. We actually went and bought a small freezer. Bought it from Home Depot. 200 bucks. And now we're going to start finding cheaper meat and putting that in our freezer. My parents had a freezer when we were growing up um, for the same thing. They always didn't know if they were going to be able to put beef or pork or chicken on the table. They didn't know. But when they did know they were priced well, they would buy it and they would keep it until it was ready to eat. And that's what we're going to do with our new freezer. I would say that uh, that's something that you all may want to think about. Um, we began budgeting and we're continuing to budget and just and still have a, a good time with it and you'll be reminding others uh, from you with you that they have a part in it too and it helps them if you describe the situation how the situation has come about and let them think about that and they'll come away thinking that's not a good deal we, there were some mistakes made and that's not very good. Um, now, um, that's enough of my ranting, I guess. But there's, you know, I've got, had some short, short articles here that I wanted to, maybe I'll put those off. Um, some of the titles are, Who's Hurting the Most from Inflation? Another article is Inflation and the Trump Factor. Here's another one, The Cost of Wishful Thinking on Inflation is Going Up to. Inflation Demands Bold Fed Action. And they have. They raised the interest rate three quarters of a point. It's been a long time since that kind of a, a move has, has occurred. Um, well, that's what they have to do. And the problem with it being so big now, three quarters of a point, that they didn't take care of it before. They overlooked it. They, they didn't think that it's going to be as big as it is and as bad as it is. And now we're seeing it again. Last weekend, Thursday and Friday, I believe, we had a combined 1,500 drop in the Dow Jones, industrial average, 1,500 points. Um, we're now looking at today another with the interest rate rise yesterday. And today I believe the uh, Dow Jones is below, well, it just keeps dropping. It's dropped through $30,000, and it's another $800. I don't know if it's going to last, um, but we'll, we'll find out. Just just pay, pay real close. Keep your, keep your ear to the ground, I guess is a good way to put it. But I've, uh, I've enjoyed this part. Uh, I think people feel a lot of ways that I do, and I hope so. I hope you'd like to comment uh, on my YouTube website and in the process I'll be looking for some comments um, I want to thank you listeners for 
searching for integrity. It's a, uh, it's a good cause. It's a good way to think about it and a good thing to do from it. Uh, I want to thank you listeners for tuning in, searching for integrity. And so long and happy trails to all.